With the new Forbidden and Limitless just three days away, we are finally saying goodbye to Aguido and Kelbeck, and that is a very unfortunate circumstance for Tournament to find itself in. However, today, what I'm going to show you is potentially what Tournament could be after the next ban list, and that is Horus Tournament Lunalite. Now, why would you play Lunalite cards in Tournament? Well, there's one major reason, and that is Bujin Kagetsuchi. Bujin Kagetsuchi is a rank 4 monster that requires two level 4 Beast Warriors, and when it is XZ summons, you send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard. And gains 100 for each Bujin. We're not playing any Bujins. Uh, however, this is essentially just a Guido and or Kelbeck, which we can access from the extra deck through the Lunalite monsters, since the main ones we'll be summoning are Kaleido Chick and Yellow Martin, which are both level 4 Beast Warriors. This also works quite well because we get to play Lunalite Tiger, which is a once uh, a soft once per turn reborn, and Yellow Martin allows us to bounce Lunalite cards on the field back to the hand, which means we can reset our Tiger to use it multiple times. The Horus engine is quite interesting for Tournament at the minute because it easily allows you to access the Zombie Vampire, which allows you to mill four cards by detaching a material. So between the Zombie Vampire and the Bujin Kagetsuchi, we can mill nine cards from our extra deck, or accessing the nine mills from our extra deck, should I say, which is essentially the same as resolving both Aguido and Kelbeck. It's less consistent because we need to actually access these monsters and we do die to hand traps a little bit more. However, it does still allow us to play the game properly. So what I'm going to do now is we're going to quickly go over this list while we're playing what we're playing. And then we're just going to do a test hand because obviously doing a combo for Tournament is completely asinine because, I mean, your mills are going to be completely different every single time. So we're playing free Rhino Heart. I think it's important to play free Rhino Heart in the next format because you need to more consistently get to your fusion monsters. And that is Sharon, Merle and Havnus, which of course we are playing one of each. Three copies of Tear Cash is a consistent miller, so we want to max out on it, and we're playing two Fenrir to search it. Three copies of um, Imp City Glory of Horus. This is obviously the one that discards and grabs our King Sark after then drawing a card. And one copy of Happy, which is the other eight we are deciding to play. Uh, these two in combination make the Zombie Vampire, as we talked about earlier. We're playing two Kaleido Chick. This monster as a ignition effect for cost, allows you to send a Lunar Light monster from your deck or extra deck to the graveyard, and its name becomes that if it's used as a fusion material. It also has a second effect that if it is used as fusion material and uh, is sent to the graveyard you can target a polymerization in your graveyard and add it to your hands and the other effect is uh blah, 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 blah. sorry if, if it's kind of sent to the graveyard you can target a poly in your graveyard and add it to your hand we're not playing poly so that's not all that important uh, but if it's used as fusion material your opponent cannot activate effects in the damage step i believe is the other effect blah, blah, blah. Uh, no, sorry, if this card is banished, you can activate this effect. Uh, this turn, your opponent cannot activate effects during the battle phase, which could be quite useful. Lunalight Tiger, as I said earlier, is a non -once, a soft once per turn reborn of a Lunalight monster while it's in this scale. And if it is on the field and destroyed, it also special summons a Lunalight from the graveyard, which is quite cool. I'm playing one copy of Lunalight Black Sheep. Uh, this has two effects. You can discard it and activate one of them. You can either add a Lunalight monster from your graveyard to your hand, or you can add polarization from your deck to your hand. If it's sent to the graveyard of fusion material, uh, for a fusion summon, uh, you can add a face-up Lunar Knight from the extra deck, or a Lunar Monster in your graveyard. So, a few good effects. We're mainly, mostly playing this one because if we mill our Lunar Knight Tiger, we want to have some method of getting it back into our hands. There are multiple ways of doing this. Obviously, we can use the Shufflers to shuffle it back and then search it. Um, but having a monster we can search off of the spells and traps I'm going to talk about in a second is quite important. Uh, still playing two copies of Malicious. I think this is still a fine card to play. It obviously gets you a body, but most importantly, it makes Dangerous, and Dangerous can send the other Mali. So you can make a Beatrice, which is quite cool. We're still playing Keldo and Medora, which will allow us to shuffle cards away and trigger our Perolino and also disrupt. Free Perolino, obviously, we want to get to our Sharon as much as we can. Uh, free copies of Scream. Again, it's a consistent melee. You could knock this down to two, potentially. I quite like free, um, but seeing multiples does suck sometimes. Two copies of King Sark. We want to play two because we're not always going to start over city we might mill them and um just having two just means M City is more likely to be able to use this effect in hand. Two copies of Lunar Light Perfume. This card is not a Lunar Light spell or trap, which means you can't set off the Yellow Martin second effect. However, it is quite strong. The first effect is it can target a Lunar Light monster in your graveyard and special summon it. And the second effect is you can banish this card from your graveyard, then discard one card and add a Lunar Light monster from your deck to your hand. You'll notice that neither of these effects are once per turn, um, so you can activate as many as you have, basically. One Foolish Burial, one Foolish Burial Goods. 
Foolish Burial goes without saying and access to the entire deck. Foolish Burial Goods is very strong in this deck because not only can we send Trivakarma, which accesses all our spells and traps, we can send Sudiac, which accesses all our monsters, we can send Perfume, which accesses all our Lunar Light cards, and we can send Scream to access our traps. So this essentially gets to every single card in the deck. Only playing one copy in this list because it is a bad mill and we don't particularly want to mill this. And sometimes milling the Lunar Lights on their own is quite bad as well. So we want to reduce the amount of bad mills in the deck. Uh, two Sudiac. It's a negate, it searches the monster when it hits graveyard, Trivakarma, searches the spells as I said, and Lunalight Serenade Dance. Um, this one is similar to Lunalight Perfume. Uh, this one, when you banish it uh, during your main phase, you can banish this card from your graveyard, send a card from your hand to the graveyard. And if you do, special summon a Lunalight monster from your deck, but you can only use this effect once per turn. Uh, this one is searchable off the Yellow Martin, which is why I'm playing one. Uh, so if this gets sent to the graveyard by card effect, you can add Serenade Dance, and it can special summon the Cloud of Shake if you can get it to graveyards. Uh, quickly go over the side deck. These are cards that you could play, but I'm opting not to. Um, Tarama's Crime. I think it'd be a lot better in this list because you are playing more monsters. Like a, an issue with Tarama's is that sometimes you just don't have a monster in hand for Crime to be live. Um, but I think because we have so many discard effects in this deck at the minute, uh, playing Crime is iffy. It's probably better post side. Um, Metanoise, quite important. It's a Book of Moon and it can send a tier element from deck to graveyard a very strong trap but i'm not playing it in this list heartbeat spell trap removal lunalite emerald birds is an interesting card so on normal or special you can send a lunalite card from your hand to the graveyard and if you do draw a card which is quite strong and the second effect is if this card is sent to the graveyard by a card effect you could target a lunalite monster who is level four or lower um that is banished or in your graveyard and special summon it except for another copy of itself um this is really good but i don't really think it's necessary to play and uh with the horus cards we were running out of space so i took the emerald bird out but it's potentially something that you could play. Mass Change 2 is an interesting card in the next format. Um, because we're playing the Lunalight Monsters, we are upping our Dark Count, so we're not just playing the Sharon, Merley, and Havnus, which means we have quite a few targets for this Mass Change 2. And Mass Change 2 can obviously summon Dark Wall Acid. I think this is going to be an interesting tech card in the next format because Fire King really struggles with macro effects, like they can barely play under Shifter at all, and Dark Lore is essentially Shifter, but it's one-sided, and it also rips a card from the hand when they search. So this is definitely a card that you could play, especially since we've upped the Dark Count, but it's probably something that you would play post-side, and also finding the extra deck room for these two cards is quite difficult. Um, Acid on Special Summon is... Harpy's Feather Duster, which is cool. Uh, Pilgrim Reaper is another card I've opted not to play, but you definitely could. It is a generic rank 6, which basically, on um, well, as a condition effect, you detach an Exe material from this card, and each player sends the top 5 cards for the deck to the graveyard. So it's essentially a Guido and Kelbeck. Um, because we are playing the Bujin Kagatsuchi and the Zombie Vampire, I don't really think it's required to play the Pilgrim Reaper in this build. However, if you weren't playing the Lunalight cards, you just wanted to play a more basic trial element deck maybe with the horus cards maybe with bice jewels this is definitely something you could play uh we'll get to the extra uh, the actual extra deck now and we are playing five fusion monsters we're playing mud dragon of the swamp good for protecting your cards and rank four plays one garura um it makes it's a six so it can make beatrice one dangerous uh this and mali makes a beatrice on its own uh predaplant drags to Pelia. obviously it's in the gate which is quite strong we're playing one kaleido heart this is the probably the most important fusion monster in the extra deck it breaks boards it's good to have on your board for perilino to actually do other stuff it's quite cool uh one sprint this can obviously send merley it can also send black sheep if that is something that you wanted to do uh sp little knight is really important because it's the best card in the game at the minute cross sheep is cool because this allows you to access your rhino heart when you've normal summoned kaleido chick um by milling the Rhino Heart, summoning a fusion monster to its own, and then summoning back the um, Rhino Heart, which allows you to use both your normal summons in the same turn. Bujin Kekasuchi, as I mentioned, builds five. Uh, Time for Redoer, obviously important for Sharon plays to be able to attach it and then use the fusion effect of Sharon. It's also just a really good card. Abyss Dweller goes without saying. Beatrice obviously goes without saying. You can send one card in your turn, one card in your opponent's turn. That's really good. Zombie Vampire, uh, not only does this mill four, but also special summons a light or dark monster you um, mill. Is it just a. or is it just a monster? Uh, yeah, just special summons any monster, which is awesome, because <laughs> this can access you your Collider Shick, which can send you a Yellow Martin, which gets you all the way to the races, or it can just special summon your Rhino Heart, or whatever you summon. We're playing one Galaxy Eyes Photon Lore. This is another rank 8 we can go into with the Horus cards. If we think we have enough gas in our hand that we don't need to go for the Zombie Vampire, we can go for this instead. And the other card we are playing is a Zeus, because we're playing so many XZ monsters. Um, I By no means do I think this list is perfect. There is definitely a lot of different things you could do here. I think the biggest weakness of this deck is going to be the amount of cards that discard from hand, and not having space to discard. Um, but with that, let's get into a test hand and let's see what we can do with this deck. 
So our opening hand is uh, pretty shit, to be honest, but we'll make it work. We're going to start by special summoning this Fenrir. We'll use the Fenrir effect and we'll search for a uh, Kash Charms Kashtira. Um, we're not going to be playing around hand traps in this because I'm not good enough at tier 2 play around them. Um, we're going to normal summon this Rhino Heart and I think we're going to send another tier cash off of this. So we'll send the tier cash and then we'll use the tier cash effect to mill 2. One, two, Perolino and the other Mali. Fantastic. We love to see that. Uh, we'll use the Tear Cash effect in our hand and we'll banish this Tear Cash. And we'll special summon this Tear Cash and we'll use this effect to mill ourselves for free. No point in milling our opponents. Uh, that sends fucking hell. We're hitting awful mills here. Um, is this the end of our turn? Yeah? I don't think we could actually do anything else here. Like, we can go for a sprint play by going for a cross sheep and then cross sheep and sprint. That would access us to... That doesn't even get us to Beatrice because... Well, I guess it does get us to Beatrice if you use the Malian hands. Um, let's see how far we can go. So we'll use this and this to go into our cross sheep. And we'll use these to go into our sprint. We'll use the Sprint effect to send... Ooh, we could send Yellow Martin. Uh, not Yellow Martin, Black Sheep. Does that accomplish anything for us? Black Sheep. Uh, Tiger Special Summon back the Black Sheep. That doesn't get the Yellow Martin engraved. So no, I think we are sending Merly here. We're just going to send the Merly, and we'll use the Merly effect. And I think we are going to just use the Merly in hand and the Merly to go for a Dangerous, and then use the Merly to go for a Beatrice. That doesn't sound awful, so I guess we'll do that. Put the Merly to the bottom and the Mali from hand to special summon out a copy of the Dangerous. Um, fortunately, we don't have to use Dangerous to discard here. Although I would like to get this Yellow Martin Graveyard, but I don't think we're going to do that right now. We're going to use the Malicious to banish itself and summon the other one we just sent. And then we're going to go for a copy of Beatrice. And then I don't really know what we're going to go for off this Beatrice. To be perfectly honest, um, if it allows me to summon it, there we go. Didn't mean to summon an attack, but that'll do. Um, so we can send the Serenade Dance here, pitching the Yellow Martin to summon the Kaleido Chick, and then we can Tiger back the Martin to make Kagetsuchi, which allows us to build five. That might be our best play. Or we could just send a tier name. There's nothing we can really make with it, which is the biggest issue. Um, if we send a perfume that doesn't really access as anything either because we've used a normal summon so yeah no we'll use the um beatrice and we'll send this dangerous so we have a fusion and graveyard for another mill so we can make a dragster pelia so we'll send here the Ooh, we could send trivakama get perolino get sharon sharon send yellow martin yellow martin search serenade dance then if we have a way of discarding this serenade dance afterwards um which would require us to see exactly perfume with our disc uh, with our mills which we're playing two of very unlikely there's nothing else that really discards that we have access to at the minute i don't think because we uh, we've already gone through the dangerous so that discard is gone i think it might just be I mean, we can make a rank four with the Sharon because we can use the Tiger to bring back the Martin and then go into a Redoer, which guarantees we get to a Dragus Pelia not based on Mills. That might actually be the safest play to do here. So yeah, we're going to send a Trivakama here and uh, we're going to banish it so we can search for a Perolino. We're going to activate the Perolino and we're going to search for a Sharon. Uh, from here, we're going to use the Sharon's effect and we are going to send this Yellow Martin to the graveyard to special summon Sharon. And we are going to mill free, and we're going to hope we don't hit the Serenade Dance. Which we didn't, but we didn't hit any good mills. But we can trigger the Yellow Martin here, and we can search for a copy of the Serenade Dance. I guess from here, we're going to use the Lunalight Tiger, and we're going to use the effect to special summon back this... Um, do we use the effect, or do we just bounce it so we can have it back in rotation? Well, I guess we're going to be detaching off of the... Yeah, we're going to be detaching off of the... Uh, redo it anyway, so we can use the effects. Then we can overlay for our time thief redoer, and we can use the effects, detaching the Sharon and then banishing itself. 
and we can use the yellow martin and we can make a dragster pelia i guess that's the best thing we can do here really because we have the reinhardt we don't have another aqua to go for the Clyde Heart. If we could go for the Clyde Heart, that would be a lot stronger since we would be able to then send another tier name, but that's just not available to us currently. And there's nothing we can do with the Horus cards. So I think we are literally just putting back the Dangerous and the Sharon to go for a copy of Dragus de Pelia. <clears throat> I don't think there's any need in activating the Perolino right now. Like, we could pop the Tiger, but the Tiger could still be used with the Yellow Martin. Um, ooh, tell you what. If we commit to setting the Serenade Dance first... Yeah, if we do this, then we can Perolino pop our Serenade Dance. And um, then after we Martin bounce our Lunar Light Tiger... Yes, yeah, so we'll Lunar Light... Uh, Martin bounce the Lunar Light Tiger... And then we'll use the Serenade Dance, banishing it and discarding this Tiger. We can summon a Kaleido Chick. We can then use the Kaleido Chick. Do we want to send anything here? We're only playing the one Martin, the Tigers and Graveyards. So the only thing we have access to is the Black Sheep, which I don't really think is that important to send. In fact, we probably want to keep it in deck for a possible... Perfume to get our tiger back. So no, we won't use the effect of um, the yellow bar, uh, the Kaleido chick. We will overlay for a copy of Bujin Kagetsuchi here. Dawning Book willing. And we'll activate the effect. It doesn't detach for cost, which is quite annoying because we sometimes want to get the yellow mutton back in our graveyard. But we'll send our five. And of course, we didn't hit anything again. So we hit the Kaleido chick, which would allow us to get Polly back. But we don't have any of those in rotation. <laughs> Two Horuses. Fantastic. And the only uh, fusion monster we did already use. So unfortunately, we have no triggers we can do here, which is quite insane from a mil five, especially when we have dug as deeply as we have. Um, yeah, I think this is just our end board, which is Dragus Apelia, Beatrice, uh, Sprint, and a Kagetsuzi. This is awful. Um, so in the end phase, obviously the Time Thief Redoer would come back, uh, which is going to be grabbing something from our opponent's top of our deck. Um, but we do have the Beatrice, which will be able to send a tier name. And since we have the Sharon and the Rhino Heart in our graveyard, we do have access to Kaleido Heart alongside our Perolino. So we are going to be able to do a few things. Our sprint is obviously a bounce because we have both uh, because we have the Kagasuchi still up and we don't have to detach from the Beatrice. We could detach from the Redoer's standby phase grab. And we do still have a Dragus to Pelio. So this is still quite a few interruptions. Um, I still can't believe we didn't hit a single Shuffler and just any of the good cards in our deck. Uh, <laughs> like Merle would have been a great, Sodiac would have been great, Scream would have been great, Keldo would have been great. Pretty much every single card in our deck, short of the other Horus, the Field Spell, the Black Sheep and the King Sarcophagus would have been really good in this situation. But this is still a fine board considering how unlucky we were with some of those mills. Um, not, I don't want to view the replay. I want to um, do one more test hand. Maybe something that will be a little bit better in the next one. While Dawning Book shuffles everything away. Give me Horace. Okay, fantastic. Right, so... Ooh, how do we want to start this one? So we'll start this one by special summoning Fenrir. I'm not going to play through play around Droll because... Uh, I'm assuming this is game one and nobody is maining Droll. Uh, we'll add the Tormund's Kashtira to our hands and then we will use the Horus sending itself and the Fenrir to grab ourselves a copy of the Kingsark. And we will draw a card and we have drawn the Yellow Martin, which is interesting to draw here. This is a perfectly fine card to discard off of this Yellow Martin. Uh, discard off this uh, Kingsark, should I say. So we'll use the Kingsark and we'll send the Yellow Martin to send a another guy to the graveyard where's the happy there's the happy and then we will special summon back this happy and this imcity uh we have to note that we can't use the yellow martin effect to search here since the king sark does send for cost and martin does need to be sent by effect um but we have two eights on our board now so we can overlay these and we can go for a copy of the zombie vampire uh so we'll special this i'll probably put it in the emz because we're going to be linking this off anyway so we'll use the effect and we'll detach the happy and we will mill five uh, not Mark 5, let's put the Mally back on top because it mills 4. Uh, so we've hit a Black Sheep, a Perfume, and a Sharon. Um, ooh, which one do we want to really special here? I kind of want to have the Black Sheep in rotation. So we could summon the Black Sheep and bounce to the Yellow Martin, which will allow us to use the Sharon's Fusion effects. Um, the issue with that is we really don't really have much we can do with the 
Sharon Fusion. There's not really much going on in our hands. Like, we could use the Zombie Vampire on the field to go for a uh, Mud Dragon, which could do a rank 4 play with the Yellow Martin, but I don't necessarily think that's the best thing. We have to remember we'd also be milling 4 of our opponent's cards, so there might be something better to smash something there. But we do have the Lunelight Perfume, which will be able to access us the Tiger. And we have the Yellow Martin. Um... Interesting. It's kind of difficult to decide what I want to do here. I think we're probably going to use the Sharon to shuffle back the Black Sheep to go for... I mean, or we could just special summon the Sharon back and use it as a rank 4 play for a Redoer, since we do have access to a rank 4 quite easily. Maybe we'll do that. Yeah, we'll special summon back the Sharon. Uh, obviously, we don't get to use any mill effects or anything, but... Uh, we do have access to this here. Um, we can now use the Rhino Heart to send a guy, which is quite cool. Because we haven't used our normal summon yet. But I think I want to keep my normal summon for a little bit longer. Uh, this Lunelight Perfume is interesting because it does discard. But it discards its cost, which is quite unfortunate. So it doesn't trigger any of our cards in hand. Um, but by discarding the Sudiac... We then have a target for our tier cash. So I think that's probably what I'm going to do. As I'm going to use the perfume, banishing it and discarding this Sudiac. And we are going to search for a copy of Tiger. I think it's probably better than searching the... Because we can go Tiger... Bring back the Black Sheep, the Martin Bounce. And we have a Sprint play at the very least. And a rank 4 place. Yeah, so Tiger is definitely the right thing to search here. So we'll grab the Tiger. If I can find it. Where's it gone? There it is. And uh, we'll do that. Um, I think I want to do this before I use the tier cash. Because I want to get some cards out of my deck. Like we can get the Merle out. Put it on the bottom. And then we're guaranteed not to mill it. So we don't have to mill that twice. So yeah, we'll use the Tiger. Tiger effect. We're going to bring back this Black Sheep. And then we're going to use the Yellow Martin effect to special summon itself bouncing this tiger. We'll then use our Yellow Martin and our Sharon to go for a copy of... Where is he? Redoer. And um, what have we got in Graveyard? Maybe now is the time we want to use the cash here because we want to fill our Graveyard a little bit more for the Merle we send. So we'll use the tier cash here, bullet banishing this... Um, I guess we could banish the Fenrir rather than the Sodiac. Is that better? Um... Yeah, probably. So we'll do that. And we'll special summon this tier cash. And we'll use the effect to mill ourselves for free. Hopefully we hit something nice here. We hit Merle, which is what I was concerned about. Um, so our sprint just become infinitely worse. Um, but I guess we don't really have much of a choice in the matter. We're going to have to use the Merle here. Because... I guess we can put back the M City, and by putting back the M City, we can go for a Mud Dragon, which is quite interesting. I guess we could also chain our Redoer, which would allow us to get the Sharon and Graveyards and the Martin and Graveyards. Are they better to use in any way? Not really. So we'll use the Merle here. We'll put the Merle on the bottom of the deck as long with the M City, and we'll go for a copy of the Mud Dragon. Another level 4 monster. We are kind of running out of room on field right now, which is a bit of a concern. Um, but we could go for a sprint place still. I don't really know what it accomplishes other than putting Merle in Graveyard. Um, which means we can go for a Clyder Heart. But without a Perilina on board, going for a Clyder Heart in turn 1 isn't that exciting. Um, do we have any way of accessing a, our rank 6 plays? Because we, we still haven't normal summoned, so we can normal summon this Rhino Heart at any point to send a Havnus to get another fusion. So we still have two fusions in our pocket. So maybe it's better to go for a Cross Sheep. What could we reborn if we did that? We could bring back the Yellow Martin. Um, but yeah, then the Tiger doesn't have another target for to bring back to go for the Kagetsuchi. So that's not really the best line, I don't think. Maybe it's just a simple SP. Then redo a... But if we... I want to get... Uh, because we, we could use the Yellow Martin to go for a... Abyss Dweller. But we could use the Rhino Heart for that as well. 
So it'd be this and this to go for cross sheep, tag out the redoer, fusion summon effects. I kind of want to do that. Not really anything we can go for, because we want to go for our abyss to whatever before we go for our mud dragon, which is the issue. Because we want to get this mud dragon in graveyard, so we guarantee a dragon to Pelia. But by making the rank four, we have to normal summon our Rhino Heart, which means we no longer have room on the field to do a fusion summon with, because we have to use the space we use for the Rhino Heart summon. So that would probably require us to get rid of two monsters off this board, which is actually quite difficult to do without just wasting a level two. But I guess we don't have to go for the cross sheet play, right? Can we make two rank fours? Well, we don't really have another rank four to go into, so maybe that's not the best line. This, this and this go into cross sheep, redo a tag out, special summon, this and this. We don't really have anything to go into. What about if we just use the mud dragon for the cross, mud dragon for the cross sheep? Uh, if we do that, then we're not opening up this zone for the fusion summon, because cross sheep has to summon to the zone it points to, right? Is that what I remember? Special on 1L4 lower monster from your graveyard. No, it doesn't. Okay, that maybe changes something. Um, I'm just going to connect to a line just because um, I'm taking too long to do the uh, to do the combo. So we'll go for cross sheep. Um, we don't want a normal summon here. Uh, we we'll use the redoer. We'll banish it, detaching the Sharon, and then we'll use Sharon's effects. Oh, this was the issue once, is we don't have a fusion we ha really have access to because we don't have another... This deck's hard. <laughs> this is basically what I'm getting to. I guess I have to use the Mud Dragon on the board if I do it this way, which I've kind of committed to at this point. So let's do that. Move this to your extra deck, and we'll go for a copy of Dragus Pelia into this zone. Then we can use the Cross Sheep to special summon something back. It has to be level 4 or lower, so I guess we're summoning back the Black Sheep, or we can summon the Yellow Martin. Uh, we still have the Tiger special summon, so we can get both of these back either way. It doesn't really accomplish anything. Uh, we'll summon back the Yellow Martin. Uh, we still have a normal summon, so we can normal summon and send something, but we're still in the same position where we're running out of deck space, uh, or field space, which is quite frustrating. Um, and there's no fusions we can really go for, so this has really turned out quite poorly. Uh, maybe we turn this and this into an SP just to make up some space. Is there any fusion we can make with what's going on in our graveyards? Um... What fusions do we have left? We have Garura, which is the same type and attribute, which we can't get to. Um, we don't have two Aquas for the Kaleido Heart. We can make the Mud Dragon again, I guess, by using two monsters with the same attribute. And um, we have the Dangerous, which requires that. So yeah, let's, let's normal summon this Rhino Heart. Use the Rhino Heart effect, and we'll send... We've used Sharon, we've used Merle, so we'll use the Havness. We'll send the Havness to Graveyards. We'll use the Havness effect, and we'll put the Havness and the... Uh, we'll put the Im City back because potentially better to draw that later on and go for the Mud Dragon. If we were playing uh, Bahamut Toad, that would be quite strong here. This only changes its attribute, right? Can't change its type. No, nope, so we can't go for Bujin Kagetsuchi. Um, if we had another rank 4, like... Because I'm looking at this and it's like, okay, we can overlay the Yellow Martin and the... Rhino Harp for Dweller, detach the Mart and then reborn it back. We don't actually have another rank 4 we can make here, and we do want to have the space for the Redoer. And there's no other Link monster we really want to make, so our extra deck maybe isn't perfect, and that's maybe something you'll have to change in the future, but I think we're going to keep the Mud Dragon on the board, and we're going to overlay this Kaleido and this... Uh, Kaleido, this Rhino and this um, Yellow Martin to go for an Abyss Dweller. And we'll just hold the Tiger as an additional point of interruption, so this is not great because we don't really have any way of accessing fusions in our opponent's turn. Um, which is never good. And we have no way of milling in our opponent's turn either. We have still got a couple of interruptions on the board. Because this uh, redo it is going to come back. We do have protection. Uh, probably what we're going to put on dark since our Drago, Redoer and SP Little Knight are all darks. So we'll probably change this to Dark in our opponent's draw phase, or whenever we can first do it. And the Abyss Dweller is going to shut off the graveyard. We have a few interruptions for the board, so this might be strong enough just to win the game. But there's certainly going to be hands and other decks, which is completely roast this board. Um, but yeah, that was two test stands with 
Lunar Light tier Horus. Neither of them particularly went as I wanted to. The ones I did in testing while building this deck were significantly better. Um, and maybe you saw plays that I did wrong there. I'm sure there is. I'm not the best tier player. But you saw that this deck does have some legs and can do something. Um with all the mill effects that you have access to. So, yep, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like, and um, we'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good one.